You mentioned personas. Um, Eddie Hearn is another one. What are your actual thoughts on Eddie Hearn? I know you've had a lot of dealings with him in the past, similar to David Hay, but what's your actual opinion of Eddie Hearn? Not a lot. He's a spoiled brat and he's not a good manager at all because he's cost AG 110 million and got him beat three times. <laughs> I don't want him managing me. <laughs> Do you think, do you put AJ's career and how he's been moulded down to Eddie Hearn, do you think if AJ was managed differently, his career could have turned out a bit different in terms of the losses? I not any different. The man's a multi-millionaire. You know, he's been a world champion. He's given everybody some good pleasurable nights, hasn't he? So what we do is support him for what he's done. You know, forget what he is now. Yo, so what, he's a beaten fighter. He's lost three times now, hasn't he? At the end of the day, he's not the man he was. But there's still a big demand for people to see him box. Eddie Hearn's done a good job of him, up to press, but he's made a couple of big mistakes late on in his career by turning down 15 million quid stand aside money and AJ would have fought Usyk. And then the belts would have been back in the UK, all of them. And again, we're here now today, offered him nearly half of everything across the board and we still can't get him to sign. So if Eddie Hearn's saying don't sign, I'd reconsider. That leads us perfectly on to the AJ fight. Everyone's talking about it, John. I know you want, you, you yourself have praised AJ recently in, oh, in the yeah, past and you've said always you've always, always wanted to see that fight, haven't you? I have, yes. And I don't understand why they won't sign. Unless you come out with some proper stuff and explain yourself right and say, well, look, you know, it's like this. I'm coming off a loss. I want some time out of the game with the family. I want to enjoy myself. I want to take months out, take a look at my career, see where I'm at. We'd understand that. Fair dues, no problem. He's earned that right. But to keep giving it the big and saying you want to do this and you want to do that. But what they want is a to and fro for the next two years. So they can make money off it. They can make money off of all of that. But we don't want to do that. We want to get it boxed off, done and fought, and on to the next move. Chase Usek down then. That's the job. The fighters. Tyson's a fighter. And that's what he wants to do. You know, chase them all down, beat them, put them in the place. Shut all these people up what thinks Tyson ain't the real deal. Because people out there still think Tyson ain't the real deal, which is incredible. People do think like that. But, again, it's an opinion. But we know we can beat these men. Where are we at then with the fight from, uh, from your... Well, to be honest with you, Tyson's been banging his drum now non-stop, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. Since he lost to Usek, what, a month ago now? And all we get is nothing. A load of excuses back. He's been offered everything. Tyson said, look, whatever you want, you've got it. Let's just fight. Sign the contract. No. So there's only one reason they won't sign, because they don't want it. What would actually happen if, when that fight takes place? <sighs> Listen, AJ is a good fighter, but Tyson's a brilliant one. When you put a brilliant fighter against a good fighter, there's only one outcome, a knockout. Within six rounds, he'd be done. That'd be it. Over. Knocked out. They know this. And then to lose to the Gypsy King... Commercial suicide, it's over. Might as well retire. You know, it's a shot at the WBC title. And heavyweight boxing, anything can happen. He's six foot six, 18 stone. He can pull a bomb out, can't he? And land it. You're a world champion overnight. Strange things have happened in the boxing world. People know that before and after. So, yeah, sometimes you've got to grow a pair of nuts and put your best foot forward and say, hang on, there's a lot at stake here. I'm prepared to take it on. You know, but they don't think like we do. Thinking like we think, that's why Tyson, number one WBC champion of the world. Thinking like we think. He's a fighting man, fight them. Uh, just in terms of heavyweight boxing, still then, Usyk. I mean, you're someone who's, again, spoke very highly of Usyk in terms of cruiserweight. You think he's a fantastic fighter. What happens if he faces Tyson? Well, I've heard say he's fighting Canelo. Well, that's his, that's his true size, isn't it? Middleweight. It's a good show between Canelo and him. They're both the same size. It'd be a good fight. But, you know, he could beat Canelo and Usyk on the same night, Tyson. Honestly, play games with them. He's just not big enough. Yeah, he's a tricky little fighter, but it's not how good Usyk is, it's how poor AJ was on the night. Poor. He didn't do anything. You know, he tried to outbox a boxer instead of getting physical and throwing him all around the ring, hitting him with everything but the kitchen sink. And when he did that, he had Usyk going to quit any time. Usyk was looking all around himself, what's I could do with being out of here? But he never had the brains, or his team never had the brains, to capitalise on that. When he got rough and physical, it was, it was a one-horse race. But then he let Usyk outbox him. Sat behind and, again, settled for second best. Like uh, the first time. And then Deontay Wilder again in the heavyweight scene. I know you've made your gripes about Deontay Wilder. What's your actual opinion of I him? I can't stand Deontay Wilder. 
and I've seen him and hit him in the face of the piece of 3 by 2 because I can't stand the man. He's a liar, talked out of his rear end, that's why his breath stinks. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, what can you do with a man like that? You know, how can you cheat three times? It's ridiculous what he's saying. And for that reason, I won't give him another paycheck. Would not. I'd give it to some other deserving poor bugger who could do the money properly and be nice about a defeat. Because you can be a man in defeat, can't you? He can't. He's not a man. Oh, he said he's not a man. Big spoilt kid. I mean, you yourself are a, a proud fighting man from a proud fighting family. I mean, for someone to say that Tyson was cheating is to accuse you all, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And it's terrible because a man like him can't swallow a defeat. How are you going to learn if you don't know where you've gone wrong and you're in denial about losing? I know he's got to drum a fight up and he's got to say this and he's got to say that to get work. But the, the bottom line is he got panned three times and demolished twice out of the three. So I don't know where he's going with that. He's a beaten man in my book. Him. Don't Enough said about him anyway. I don't yeah. like him. We'll stop talking about Wilder. Um, about we're talking about influencer fighting again with, yeah. with Tommy. I know everyone's asked you this, but would you consider having another fight? Me? Yeah. Of course I would. Nobody wants to fight though, do they? You know, I'm up for options, me, but the time's running out for me. I'm 57 years of age. I'm not 50, I'm 57. I was born in 65, not 64. But even so, I'm fit and strong and I'm probably in better condition now than what was 10 years ago. Because I don't take drugs, I don't drink that much, and I'm in bed every night and I train every day. So I'm, I'm what all them champions was then, they're not now. Because the high life's done them. I mean, ah, why, do, why do you like fighting so much and why would you, why would you give a, an influencer fight a go as well? Why do you love it so much? I love it because even when I was a professional, I used to fight without training. I'd roll up my bag because I want to punch up on a Saturday night. You know, on a Friday night, you say to me, oh, you, there's a man here, do you want to fight him? Yes, I was getting 200 quid. And I must have loved it to get my head smashed in for 200 quid. Because that's what we do, isn't it? You know, I love fighting. Win, lose, a draw. I've been knocked out before. He gives a damn. You go again? Yeah. What the hell? Who would be the perfect opponent for you, would you say? If you could handpick someone, regardless of who they are or how you could get, get that fight going, who would be the perfect fight? Mike Tyson. Because I named my son after him. That'd be a, would that be an honour for you? Be an honour for me. Be an honour. I'm not interested in the rest of them. No. How would a fight with Mike Tyson go with you? Um, I don't know, because, well, let's put it this way. <laughs> 20 years ago, we wouldn't be here having this conversation, would we? <laughs> but now, you know, they've led a funny life, haven't they? He's led the high life, you know. He's not as fresh as me, I know that. I'm as strong as him, and I live cleaner than him. And that's the difference between me and him. You know, let me put it this way. He probably beat me, but I could probably beat him. But there's one thing for sure. <laughs> he won't be much of an exhibition, because I would try and win. I've always tried to win. Even when I couldn't win, I tried to win. And even when I was boxing, I was a front foot fighter. So what the hell? You know, he's been a, he's been a world champion. He's been a Hall of Fame great. If he wasn't a great, I wouldn't have named my son after him. I've got utmost respect for Mike Tyson. It'd have been an honour to share the ring with him. And it'd be even bigger honour to get knocked out by him. <laughs> and it'd be. I would try my best. He knows that. He knows I'd try my best. But you know, I've always looked up to Mike Tyson. Phenomenal fighter. Was a young man, the best it's ever been. You know what I'm saying? You know, my son, great. Who knows what would have happened? Because Mike Tyson was tricky. He had plenty of movement, plenty of head movement. He was in and out, quick feet, and he had bombs in each hand. A great fighter. You know, it's a shame to see him how he is today. You know, with all, all year about them, with stem cells, blood transfusions to make them younger, whatever they call them. You know what I'm saying? But he's a great fella. And I do like him. And I'd be honoured to share the ring with him. But I, I want to I, try I, my best. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm a big, strong man. I'm 18 and a half stone fit. I train every day. You know, I can do what most young men can do. I know I'm fresher. But yeah. listen, you can be as fresh as you want. If Mike Tyson hits you with them hammers, mate, it's over, isn't it? <laughs> but listen, it, it it's is. great, if they want it, the fans, it's a great spectacle, isn't it? And I'm not bothered about getting a good hiding. I was going to say, it'd be, on, it'd be an honour for me just to even buy the pay-per-view. I'd, I'd listen, love that fight. One thing about me, I'd take it to him. He wouldn't have to come looking for John Fury. I'd get my hands up high, no or strong. You know, I'd let him probably, he could do what he wanted to do. Can you imagine the press conferences? God only knows. We'd probably have a fight before the press conferences, wouldn't we? But I love Mike Tyson. And Mike, I'm saying it, mate. I love you, man. But if we can do something, let's do it. Uh, two more for me then. Uh, for, secondly, well, firstly, David Hay. We spoke to him last week and he said that the reason he always goes against Tyson Fury is because it's fun and it sells. What is your actual opinion of David Hay? So what is he saying? Lies sell then? 
conning the public. He's there paid for an honest opinion as a pundit. What's he saying? He's a liar because it sells. Is that what he's saying? He said That's that where saying. would the fun be if I said Tyson's great, he's going to win, I want to give the truth. People. That's where the fun is. Be one here. If somebody's paying a man like David A, who's been a world champion, they're paying for honest opinions, not some crap, because he might get some viewing figures. It's lies, isn't it? Because you're not being honest, are you? I'm sorting and I'm being totally honest with you, because I'm an honest man. If I would say, even if he was the ice fighter and he was losing, I'm going to say he's losing. I'd say, no, the other man's winning. I'm not going to say, oh, because he, he's on my side and I've got to big him up. I'd feel an idiot because there are people, people in the know you've got to be careful of because they're saying he don't know what he's talking about. How can he say this and that when he can see his man's losing? If my man's losing, I'm going to say he's losing. I'm not dressing up for nobody. You know, but if he feels he's got to tell lies to deceive the public to keep his job, that's up to him. But listen, I'm not knocking David A's achievements, cruiserweight champion of the world, heavyweight champion of the world, don't get any better. A lot of respect for him in that department. You know, but tell the truth. You know, and I do, and stop being jealous of Tyson. I do believe he is jealous of Tyson. And he is scared stiff of him, isn't he? He's scared stiff of Tyson. He cut his own eye years ago to get out of the fight. You know, he said he's going to fight him twice and pulled out twice. But listen, you couldn't blame him. Because if he'd have fought the Gypsy King back then, he probably wouldn't have a pundit's job now because he wouldn't be able to talk today, would he? <laughs> Messing with the Gypsy King, David A. Watch him. And, um, he's got a lot of respect for the guy. He's been a world champion. Good luck to him. And um, finally then, um, obviously... It's, it's amazing to think you have one son who's a heavyweight champion. Now you've got Tommy, all your other sons are brilliant fighters. Yeah. And he's conquering WWE as well. He's, he's global. Like, how proud is that for you? Listen, son, I'm sat here probably the most luckiest, proudest man alive today. You know, and I keep pinching myself every hour of the day thinking I'm going to wake up from a dream. But listen, it's reality. He's here. He's doing it. He's won everything. You know, He's had a number one at single with Robbie Williams. What can I say? He's won everything and done everything, can he? WWE, that's it. What can you say? You just, you just produce it, Jack. Just produce it. That's why I've insured me nuts for 10 million quid. <laughs> there you go. Insure, insured your nuts. <laughs> insured me nuts, 10 million quid. I mean, there's you only, back it up. There's only champions come out of these nuts, believe me. It's been proven, hasn't it? All my lads can fight. They're all big, strong men, six foot, five plus. You know, so... Um, doing summer, aren't I? You know, so at the end of the day, but listen, serious notes. Tyson's the king of the world. He can do everything. There's not a mission he cannot complete and be a winner of it. He's a man I of mean, all missions. You saw that from his birth, didn't you, when he was premature yeah, and he's come through everything. It's hard to stay in the world, you know, and he's in the world. And I knew if you live, you'll do big things. That's why I call him Tyson after a wrecking machine back in the day. You know, and listen, I said he's going to be 20 stone, nearly seven foot tall, and heavyweight champion of the world. And he's exceeded them predictions tenfold. He's conquered everything. Everything he's done, he's won at. Everything he's tried to do, he's got the ultimate out of it. Top scores every time. And you can't knock that. He is what he is, isn't he?